Hello everybody and welcome to Aaron Church Online. My name's Becca and I lead the church with a fantastic group of people. We're normally meeting together in a school hall, 400 of us, and we can't do that right now. So for now, welcome to Aaron Church Online. We're so pleased you're here. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, welcome. Here at Aaron Church, we are passionate about our local community, which is why we run the Wickbourne Centre and the Play Centre Nursery and the Preschool, Aaron Youth Projects and various children's and youth activities and the Cap Debt Centre. But we would love to invite you to an Alpha course, an opportunity to learn about the Christian faith in an informal environment from the comfort of your own home. To find out more about the Alpha course or any of the things that we run in the community, go to aaronchurch.com. Everyone. My name is Emily and welcome to Aaron Church Online. We are so happy to have you with us today, especially because it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. We're so proud of all that you do. We also know today might be a difficult day for some of you and we are right here behind you. So today we are continuing our series on review and Cat Archer will be speaking to us from Genesis all about what we have learned in this time. We're going to have some messages for the dads from some of the children in our church and a conversation with a father all about being a dad. So me and Harry have had a very busy time packing up our flat because we're going to be moving house. And isn't it amazing the amount of stuff we accumulate? We've only been there for two years and we've got drawers filled with things. We've got wires that we don't know where they go. We've got bits of rubbish shoved into drawers, all sorts. And this reminded me of some of the stuff we take on emotionally. So this might be anxiety or fears or negative thoughts we go over in our head and how we don't need to hold on to those because God takes those from us. So as we worship today, my prayer is that any stuff you're holding on to, any of those negative thoughts or things you're carrying, I pray that you know that you don't need to hold on to those. God's got you. God can take those away from you and he loves you. Let's worship together. Savior's robe as he walks into the 
I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation. Today, today, 
amazing. The winner of the best puppet has just been announced. And the winner is Nathan Burke. Happy Father's Day, Daddy! Happy Father's Day! Yay! Tell me again what you love about Daddy. I love his um play science and his jokes. Play science and jokes. Daddy, you're really funny when you sing with songs in the kitchen and the car. I love you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. And I love you, Daddy. It's so funny when you play to come on so fast. Your turn. Happy Father's Day! <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Conversations with. And today we have got the amazing Chris Gillam with us. And Chris has been working in our kitchen for a little while, and um, he's done just the most amazing job. So thank you so much for that, first of all, Chris. And then also. It's Father's Day, so I was wondering if you could uh, just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about fathers that have really inspired you. Yeah, okay, so yeah, my name's uh, Chris Gillam. I'm uh, married to Louise, and I've got three children. Um, we've been married for 27 years. And uh, it's gone in a flash. It goes so quickly. Um, I never believed when we first got married that uh, people would say, you know, make the most of this time because when children come along, it will change your life completely. But uh, here I am now with three grown-up children, and uh, those people are absolutely right. Um, when I first came into the church, I was very single, and um, um, a long way from where I really ought to have been. And um, it was quite amazing coming into the church and um, God changing me, changing me from the inside into what I thought um, I was meant to be as a, as a, as a, as a bloke um, and as far as women were concerned. And I, very fortunately, I met Louise and uh, we got married and, we had children, and during that time, I think God used uh, many, many men, particularly in the church, um, to, as almost like father figures for myself. And uh, people like um, John Thomas, um, a fellow called David Thatcher, whom you might know a little bit better, has been a major influence in my life. And uh, people like Rodney Kingston. And uh, some of the younger men, 
Stu Smith, Martin Smith, and there's uh, countless other guys, Chris State, Doug Jolly, all these fellas that I used to look on at and um, think, you know, these are steady blokes who stay married, look after their children. So that was, that was a great help for me in the early days. And uh, I still look towards a lot of these guys for inspiration, guidance and and whatnot. Yeah, so... Yeah, and, and there's a couple of other guys that I'd mention as well who um, are not actual, as far as I know, they're not actual dads themselves. People like Norman Barnes and Dave Payne, for instance, who are just solid, solid guys in the church who are very fatherly to a lot of um, a lot of people in the church, men and, and women, you know. So, yeah, lot, lots of guys, really. Uh, so, Chris, uh, tell us, what have you learned about being a dad yourself? I think um, looking back over the years, one of the things that, as I've been thinking about this, is the most important thing for me, I think, is showing how much I love Louise in front of the children. Um, I know that now there would be going oh and all that kind of stuff you know um but i think secretly the children like it they've always liked it and when they were little if we had a cuddle or so they'd try and get in between us and whatnot and now if we have a cuddle it's oh you know get a room and all that business but uh, i think deep down they 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 find it very reassuring that uh you know daddy loves mummy so to speak um and um, in our house, I have a tendency to be known as Martin, who comes from the English butler in parent trap, because I'm very much, I am the servant in the house, you see. And I think that sums up being a dad, really. It's you've just being a servant and uh, showing that you love the master, which, of course, is Louise. So, <laughs> that's it, you know, and it, I think that brings reliability and stability and reassurance for the children. So, you know, it seems to be working. It's brilliant. Have you got any funny stories? I have. I have. Um, when Finn was uh, about two and a half, three years old, um, he went to a nursery locally. I won't mention the nursery. Um, and he, playing in the garden, he managed to climb up the fencing and undid the top latch of the gate and let all the children out of the uh, nursery, much to the horror of the staff. Um, but it was kind of ingenious of him. And he's always been like that. He's, you know, he works out how to do things. So, yeah, that was quite funny. And then um, the girls made us laugh. Uh, back in 2012, we were on holiday in uh, Bude. It was the London Olympics. And um, we decided we were going to go for a, um, a curry down in the town centre that night. And uh, I, think, I think Alex was probably about... 12 or no not 12 about 14 or 15 and Mia was maybe 11 or 12 so very much in that attitude era you know Alex was a teenager and Mia was an up-and-coming teenager and so they got all dressed up and they put high heels on well we knew it was going to be about a 30 minute walk down into the uh, the town and um yeah within about five minutes of walking they were regretting putting their heels on and both of them had a strop on all night long because it just ruined their whole image you know the whole dressing up thing and looking nice for the fellas or whatever yeah so i remember that um making louise and myself laugh did you have to carry them back no no we made them walk there and back <laughs> cruel parents oh, wow. i think we well, carried they carried their heels in the end. That's good. Yeah. Well, 
thank you for talking to us, Chris, and sharing your thoughts and your memories. And a happy Father's Day to you. Uh, thank you, Becca. In our review series on Joseph so far, Joe has unpacked the journey from the promise to the purpose and has encouraged us to embrace the process, both the darkness and the light. As God says, it is good. Last week, John reminded us how many times God says that he was with Joseph in every part of his story, from the jail cell to Pharaoh's court. God has been with us too through this last year, through every difficulty and every tragedy. So today we're looking at what did we learn, we as a community, as a family and as Aaron Church. Through Genesis 37 to 50, Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, had his freedoms robbed. He was taken as into a foreign land. He was slandered by his employer. He was forgotten by those he helped. How isolating and enraging and frustrating and lonely and fearful he must have felt at times. Now this past year, we haven't been kidnapped or sold into slavery or falsely accused of rape, but I can definitely identify with some of those feelings. I imagine that not much was recognisable for Joseph. When he first arrived in Egypt, his home had changed, the rules, expectations and culture, even the language had changed. He had gone from being the favoured son to being a slave. For us all, there has been much change and adaption in this last year, in every aspect and in every day of our lives. So what have we learnt from this huge shaking up? We know that God was with Joseph every step, but it also says in chapter 39 four times that God blessed everything he did so he succeeded. Joseph had his part to play. He had to participate, show up, engage, and God blessed his actions. God blessed him, and God blessed all that came into contact with him. Chapter 39 says, From the day that Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. All the affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and livestock also flourished. A lot had been taken from Joseph, and a lot was out of his control. But Joseph could still choose how he showed up. A lot has been taken from us, and a lot is out of our control. But we still have a choice how we show up. It matters to God, it matters to each other, and it matters to you. It matters to God in the Beatitudes. It tells us that having the right attitude, even in the worst of circumstances, glorifies God. And it matters to each other because Joseph's blessings from God overflowed into all aspects of his environment. It said everything in his household and in the fields flourished. And it matters to you. How you show up every day, your attitude, your heart will totally change how you experience life. Now, I read Joseph's story knowing the ending, knowing um, that what, what's to come. But Joseph served in Potiphar's house for over a decade and he didn't know what lay ahead. He didn't know about the imprisonment or about Pharaoh's palace. But Joseph lived in the moment, humbling himself before God and his masters, working hard and receiving God's blessing. In Psalm 73, it says, no doubt about it. God is good. Good to good people, good to the good hearted. But I nearly missed it, missed seeing his goodness. I was looking the other way, looking up at the people at the top, envying the wicked who have it made, who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the world. We mustn't let life pass us by one day at a time, hoping for something else in the future. We need to show up in the today. I read a blog this week by a singer called Night Birdie. And in it, she talks about God's mercies. She often reminds herself of the Israelites who were wandering in the desert for decades, praying to arrive in the promised land. But instead of an answer to that prayer, she writes, For 40 years, their shoes didn't wear out. Fire lit their path every morning. Every morning, he sent them mercy bread from heaven. I look hard for the answers for the prayers that I don't pray. I look for the mercy bread that he promises to make fresh for me each morning. The Israelites call it manna, which means, what is it? It's that same question I'm asking again and again. There's a mercy here, somewhere, but what is it? What is it? What is it? 
as lockdowns have been repeated and end dates have been delayed, we may have well felt frustrated that prayers aren't being answered. But this year, I believe as a church, we have learned to reposition ourselves despite circumstances, despite letdowns and despite our feelings. Let's continue to show up no matter what. Like Joseph, let's continue to be ready to learn and adapt. Like Nightbird, he says, let's continue to expect and to look for God's daily mercies. What is it today? Find me in the river Find me on my knees I've walked against the water Now I'm waiting if you please I've longed to see the roses But never felt the thorn But our pretty crimes But never paid the price Find me in the river Find me there Find me on my knees With my soul leaping Even Find me in the river Find me on my knees I've walked against the water Now I'm waiting if you please We didn't count on suffering Didn't count on pain But if the blessing's in the valley And in the river we will wait Find me in the river Find me there Find me on my knees With my just take some time right now and say God what do you want to say to us what do you want to say to us as a church what are you speaking to us about because I know that God is always speaking it's a little bit like radio 2 right now is playing but we can't hear it unless we tune in and we want to tune in to what God is speaking to us about as a community what do we need to change as a church what, what things have we learned about community, about church, about our relationship with God that are important things to take into the future? So let us just pause for a moment and say, God, speak to us. We want to hear what you're saying. Father, I thank you that you are always speaking, that you have something that you want to say in our lives and in our church. And we just want to dedicate the church to you. Here at Aaron Church, we say you're the leader. We say 
you're the person that we want to follow, wherever that may be. And I pray that we as a community would take hold of everything that you have for us and we would be led by you. We would learn the things that you want us to learn and we would walk into the future holding onto your hand. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. We hope you enjoy the rest of your Father's Day and have loads and loads of fun. Um, as a church, we're all on a generosity journey. The church relies upon financial gifts to run our activities, employ staff, and facilitate the pastoral and support services we run for the wider community. All of us are at one stage of this journey. So wherever you are and whatever your situation, please prayerfully consider how you might be able to give to the church. You can go to aaronchurch.com forward slash donate. Please keep an eye on our social media accounts for an update about our plan moving forward with in-person services. Thank you so much. It's been great to have you with us. See you soon. Bye.